phone in case I need to. Okay, it's we are going live. We are going live. It's time. A very good evening to all the Indian viewers and hello to the other viewers across the globe. Thank you so much for joining us for the session for, uh, of Nutrition Nectar. Uh, I know some of you have joined for the first time, but some of you have been here before. So thank you so much for joining us once again. The two experts with today are Mrs. Shiny Chandran and Mrs. Neeti Jaipuria. The flow of program will be as follows. We will begin with an interactive session time, followed by recipes showcased by Neeti, and finally answering viewers' questions. Please type your questions in the chat box. This is not a certificate program, so please do not expect certificates for attending this session. If you have any topic sessions, suggestions for future sessions, please do write either in the chat box or send an email to me. My email address is Sheila Krishnaswar. at you. I'm going to be expressed in this program for information only. Kindly seek a physician's help if you have a medical problem and please consult a qualified dietitian for personalized. Let's move on to the uh, program. Uh, let's start the uh, Q&A. Shiny, a very warm welcome. To I, I heard that a lot of people are eagerly waiting to listen to you and to also know more about PCOS and how eating right can help to manage PCOS much better. So thank you for uh, coming on this show. Pleasure uh, being. Let's take the first thank question. Uh, true. Thank you. Uh, true to your name, you're a shining star in the field of sports nutrition. I'm sure everybody is aware of that. But very few people know that you also see many patients with PCOS, that is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Is there any connection between these two or has this you know, varied interest or clientele grown organically? Okay. Um, Ma'am, I, uh, I had been working in a lot of fitness centers and in YMCA College of Physical Education. And uh, during that time, besides uh, uh, catering to uh, the sports clients or the athletes. There were others who reached out because they were exercising quite a lot um, in the fitness center or in the uh, YMCA grounds, but they were not losing weight as much as they would like to. And that's when I started digging deeper because uh, they were eating absolutely uh, the so-called uh, you know balanced diet, but still the results were not coming through. So that's when we realized just about calorie counting and there's a lot more beyond that and uh, hormones seem to be interfering there and uh, that's when this entire thing about insulin resistance came up because when I studied in college there was uh, in our syllabus of course or in those days there was nothing called polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome or disease yeah. it was not part of our syllabi at all and uh, this was a absolutely new uh, challenge and uh, had to learn over a period of time and the strategies from sports nutrition helped a lot to uh, crack a lot of difficult cases so we just had to uh, work around it but the concepts from sports nutrition helped tremendously so that's how my interest in pc was uh, developed over a period of time and uh, we have successfully reversed a lot of cases Okay, that's great to know, and I'm, uh, I know you're doing pretty well in both the uh, fields, uh, that is PCOS as well as uh, uh, the sports nutrition. Uh, let's move on to the technical part now. What is the average age of a woman with PCOS that comes to you for presentation? Okay, uh, that's such a fantastic question because a lot of school children are coming. 
uh, that's around uh, the teenagers 11th standard and 12th standard kids are coming walking in because uh, they hardly indulge in any kind of exercise and they sleep late their lifestyle has changed radically and the present generation that we know like they go to bed quite late because of watching television or perhaps they are busy chatting with a cousin who is living abroad and uh, so much has changed these days and so the age group is anywhere um, between say 16 years 15 16 years till around of course a reproductive age because a lot of women come because the gynecologists have been referring them and they are undergoing infertility treatment or perhaps they are not getting their regular menstrual cycle and um, also referrals from dermatologists and cosmetologists because most of these clients have facial hair severe acne and a lot of pigmentation around their forehead and uh, face and that's where it all starts and they also have insulin resistance so it's all interconnected and that's how they reach out uh, for help yeah okay that's the next question is what are the physical and physiological changes that you see in women with pcos okay uh, can i uh, share the slides now would that be appropriate yes yes please okay. yeah uh, so please do let me know if you can view it are you able to yes yes okay uh, so no i'm not able to view the slides are you sharing them yes ma'am i'm actually sharing just a minute just a minute i'll just share the Are you able to view? Yes. Clearly. Okay. So this is the condition in which they come to us. so there are individuals who will be exercising quite a lot and um, eating healthy whereas their friend or cousin or any friend might be eating double the amount of food that they are consuming and still they wouldn't be able to see any results so it can be very frustrating when uh, someone comes to the fitness center and then exercises 2 hours in the morning 2 hours in the evening and eats very little food and low calorie food and supposedly healthy foods and uh, still they do not get results so this is how this entire journey started and uh, as far as pcos goes uh, this is a new age phenomenon say in the past uh, 10 15 years is when we have seen a whole lot of these kind of issues cropping up and uh, be it doctors or in any conference they all say that um, in the 1990s or early 2000 we never had this kind of an issue and uh, every second person who walks in had this problem and these are the signs and symptoms if you notice uh, a lot of pigmentation around the neck and skin tags and also acne uh, acne also on the back uh, the upper back even that so these are the most common problems with which they present and then they would have approached a dermatologist or a cosmetologist or perhaps gone to the gynecologist because they've been missing their uh, period okay so uh, and uh, this this slide might look very complicated basically i just wanted to share that um, i've also noticed the connection to uh, the genetics that when individuals have type 2 diabetes any family member has uh, type 2 diabetes or is, there's a family history of obesity the eating pattern at home also influences the child who's you know eventually um, making that kind of choice because the parents are also eating similar food and uh, sedentary lifestyle and um, usually when they go to a doctor an endocrinologist or a gynecologist they are given metformin and uh, because this is the early strategies to go ahead and deal with um, insulin resistance as well as pcos since they are very closely connected it's more to do with uh, insulin resistance and they rapidly 
convert whatever they consume into fat and the waist uh, hip ratio increases uh, drastically so the abdominal or the truncal obesity is the biggest problem that we get to see here and of course all the pigmentation but the good news is once they make the lifestyle changes and um, adjust their sleep wake cycle and start eating according to their carbohydrate tolerance the results are fantastic so these are some of the things that we have noticed uh, there could be um, when it's a insulin resistance the classic case would be someone who says like i eat a meal and within 2 hours i'm looking for a sweet or a chicky or some candy some confectionery or anything sweet and uh, sudden hunger pangs even in spite of eating a good meal um, they feel hungry in the next 2 hours and uh, irresistible craving for sugars that's another factor so they might reach out for tea coffee or any sugary drink and the waist size goes on increasing as i mentioned earlier and also uh, androgens are high so which means uh, they'll be going for threading uh, very often or they might even have facial hair and that's another factor which actually disturbs the women or the young girls quite a lot mood swings they have terrible temper and all these are because of you know the androgens that's going up in their blood stream and also uh, the hormonal disturbances there's also joint pain headaches skin related issues and uh, anxiety could be there uh, libido so all these kind of trigger this entire it's like a cascade of events which happen and uh, so at the cellular level controlling the inflammation becomes very important and also you know, the the stress and anxiety is another contributing factor because uh, uh, the cortisol levels are going to be high when one is stressed and that triggers the release of insulin and over a period of time if they also consume simple carbohydrates uh, insulin resistance is uh, bound to come and this is what happens um, uh, so this is one of the biggest issues and a lot of people uh, do not understand or perhaps don't see the importance of gut health here so there could be people with food sensitivities allergies or intolerances or there could be other issues like autoimmune disorders also which affect them tremendously uh so ma'am do i continue with the presentation or shall i stop right here uh, take your question yeah so i was going to ask uh, yeah i was going to ask you the next question do any of your pcos patients have diabetes or dyslipidemia but you did mention that i think uh you know while speaking on the earlier slides yes so i'll just move to the next one uh pcos cannot be cured and i'm sure everyone knows that but can diet help to manage symptoms better and how do you tackle insulin resistance with diet okay excellent ma'am uh, yes of course uh, pcos is one thing which can be controlled and in some of our clients that we have seen uh, they have gone back for ultrasound scan and they don't have pcos anymore so the cysts would have uh, regressed and uh, they get their menstrual cycle regularly and there are different types also so there are some uh, for whom it can only but in few cases it can be reversed and the main thing is about accepting what their body type is and carbohydrate intolerance is seen a lot here so they need to understand how much of carbohydrates they can tolerate on a daily basis i think that's where the challenge comes um somewhere down the line over the years a lot of people um have felt or rather every eating every 2 hours seems to be the norm and uh, it actually works against individuals who have pcos because every time they're going to be eating any kind of food um it's going to trigger the release of insulin which will convert whatever they've consumed into fat very rapidly uh, so let me just show you what are the strategies that we apply so Uh, as i mentioned the challenge is for any woman with pcos there's quite a lot of uh, food cravings appetite is a ma major issue they are not able to resist the kind of cravings largely because soon after they finish eating their sugar level crashes so reducing carbohydrate is the most important factor because that triggers a lot of binge eating also because their sugar levels are so low Uh, let me just quickly show you the diet aspect 
Okay, so the strategy would be to fill half the plate with a lot of non-starchy vegetables. So potatoes or uh, carrot, beetroot, yellow pumpkin, and uh, the American sweet corn, those kind of um, vegetables with quite a lot of starch. And also uh, including a lot of lean proteins will be very helpful. So I think this is one of the most important factors. So I always show my clients this uh, meal plate and ask them to include this kind of food on a daily basis and uh, keep fine tuning it until we figure out their carbohydrate threshold. Okay, that's that's excellent. Uh, so the next question is again related to carbohydrates. You did mention that people cannot tolerate carbohydrates. So there is a lot of talk on how a low carbohydrate or a low GI diet can improve PCOS. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, yes, uh, it does. It does help tremendously because, uh, um, as I mentioned, while working in fitness studios, um, I've met clients who would be eating um, a big bowl of papaya or watermelon, and they used to include uh, one cup of chana rajma, and uh, not realizing that this does have quite a lot of carbohydrates, healthy carbohydrates. But since they have insulin resistance, uh, they are not able to handle the load of carbohydrates that's coming into their system and insulin uh, has become resistant and there's a whole lot of uh, fat that's piling up right so unless one understands this connection it, it, it becomes a little challenging and low low carbohydrate is the way to go but putting this into practice is the biggest challenge because um, a lot of us are so used to our rotis pav uh, idli dosas pongal lupitu and all that and um, yeah, helping them make the transition over a period of three to six months, I think that is where the biggest challenge comes. So having a high protein diet and how to incorporate that, I think Neeti Ma'am's inputs today are going to be very, very useful uh, because she's a cookery expert and she understands nutrition and uh, putting uh, things into practice. I think she's someone who's going to help us. So basically, basin chilla, mung chilla, these are dishes which are very, very helpful. Using whey protein also kind of helps a lot. And basically correcting micronutrient deficiencies because B-complex, magnesium, manganese, selenium, zinc, chromium plays a big role. And omega-3 fatty acids is something uh, which is highly deficient. And the ratio of omega-6 is to 3 has to be maintained really well. And uh, Srimati also mentioned in her presentation about 4 is to 1 how important it is to maintain that for uh, cognitive development. I think they, it also plays a big role in uh, PCOS as well. So limiting carbohydrates, but trying to include a lot of micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, fiber. I think that's the key. And a good amount of fiber and also fermented foods. Uh, that makes a big difference. So the usual recommendations would be to avoid simple carbohydrates. So any form of porridge, milkshakes, a quickly digesting carbohydrates, which is uh, white rice or a pasta noodle prepared with um, refined flour, those things are a definite no-no. So these are the foodstuffs which are usually uh, I recommend, or rather I ask my clients not to include. And this makes a big difference. Uh, even large amounts of fruits is something that we curtail for the same reason because of the fructose and the results are great. In fact, it was very difficult because all through college and all my senior dietitians, when I worked in hospitals, we've always emphasized or we've been taught that uh, how good fruits are, vegetables are. And then we encourage people to eat a lot of steamed chana, uh, sundal that we call it, or uh, sprouts and all in large quantities. But we had to tweak it. And it was quite difficult for this advice to be given to our clients. So it really challenged a lot of conventional beliefs or uh, strategies that were taught to us by our professors and senior dietitians. Yeah, that was a wonderful explanation. Uh, thank you, Shiny. So, uh, as you rightly said, it's really difficult for uh, an Indian diet, I think, for, for us Indians to uh, reduce carbohydrates because we are so used to eating carbs either in the form of uh, whole grains or, or in the form of fruits or root vegetables. I mean, potatoes is 
but it was I used to go. So yes, it can be challenging. But I think it's uh, it's important if they you know if they wish to manage PCOS, I think it's important for them to follow your advice. Um, all right, so you have already mentioned uh, the kind of general dietary diet, dietary guidelines uh, that you give to those with PCOS. Is there anything else that you would like to add as far as diet is concerned? If not, we will move on to the books that you would recommend. Sure. So uh, the, the lifestyle is also very important because uh, most often um, it's a sleep wake cycle because unless that is taken care of, um, there's a lot of disturbance and insulin, leptin, ghrelin, all this could be disturbed radically. So I always uh, tell my clients it's very, very important that um, you, you make this uh, sleep wake cycle, fix it because 10, a, uh, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. is the most important and be in alignment with circadian rhythm. Get adequate sunlight. That's another important aspect because vitamin D plays a big role. It reduces inflammation and all that. Gut health, um, understanding food intolerances, whether lactose or gluten. I think that's very important so that um, the inflammation at the cellular level can be addressed. Eliminating endocrine disruptors. So using plastics or using too much of um, makeup, which has quite a lot of chemicals in it or uh, anything in that environment like um, uh, air fresheners or any kind of aerosol uh, related products. Okay, So I think all these little factors uh, which come in our daily life can also go ahead and disrupt our hormones and uh, exercise. Uh, I advocate a lot of that. Uh, connect them to professional fitness trainers. So cardiovascular and strength training or if somebody doesn't like going to a gym, it's always yoga. So this makes a big difference and also to manage stress. So sometimes uh, if it is someone who's highly stressed, uh, I always recommend them to a professional uh, counselor and the psychologist uh, really helps them out with their strategies. And this has been uh, very, very helpful. So this is all about sleep. Uh, I think one of the biggest factors is to avoid caffeine, alcohol, and also to stop using gadgets two hours prior to going to bed. And uh, this has a huge impact on the wellness as well as the hormone health. Uh, and this is one of those uh, persons that I really follow very closely, Dr. Mark Hyman. So he also advocates uh, similar strategies for gut health. And uh, okay. lack of sleep, how it can affect insulin to a big way. And of course, uh, it has its impact on mood swings, immunity, hormone imbalances. So all this is interconnected, if you notice whether it's hypothyroidism, PCOS, or insulin resistance, sleep is the foundation. Yeah, and uh, I usually do not recommend dairy. So these are some of the options as far as diet is concerned uh, for a person who could be lactose intolerant. And for the ones who are vegans, I recommend a lot of plant protein. So these are some of the examples. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, can you can you uh, can you just hold on to this slide for a minute because I think people would like to see uh, the various vegan sources. I think you have pumpkin seeds. I'm trying to read on my screen. Uh, there is tempeh. There is spirulina. There is almonds. Uh, what else? I chia seeds. There are plenty of options if uh, <laughs> if people want the vegan proteins. Yeah, that's excellent, uh, Shiny. And it looks like uh, the cosmetic industry is going to have a bit of a jitter because you said a lot of chemicals coming from uh, sprays and cosmetics uh, can also you know, disrupt the uh, uh, hormones. They can be endocrine disruptors. Uh, so this is really wonderful information. So coming to uh, the books that you would recommend, I know you're a voracious reader of books on various health and nutrition topics you've read over the last several years. You must have read a few hundred books already. So would you recommend any books on the topic of PCOS for our readers? Sure. There isn't anything specific, but uh, I'll share the books that I have read over the past uh, 10 years. Uh, so these are some of the people. Um, Gary Talks, look at the top left. This gentleman in the black uh, blazer is actually Gary Talks. 
uh, I listen to a lot of his um, podcasts as well as his writings. Um, uh, I've been reading quite a lot. I've read a lot. And then I've met Professor Tim Noakes, The Challenging Beliefs. I have a copy of his book. Uh, he had been to Chennai when I was working in Ramachandra Medical College. And uh, this entire thing about low carbohydrate, high fat diets, like it was a very different perspective. And then he's someone who asked me to question a whole lot of our beliefs that has been taught to us. And then to think laterally, I think um, uh, that takes a lot of conviction to go against the tide and uh, really look at what the truth is. So uh, that's one person that I follow very uh, regularly. And of course, Dr. Asim Malhotra's uh, books as well as podcasts and videos. And uh, the other gentleman here is Dr. Peter Bruckner, who's actually the Australian uh, sports physician. So if you see, there is a connection to sports uh, science as well. So, And these are the books by Gary Jobs, uh, which actually I think I read sometime in 2012, 2013. And uh, this, this was um, uh, very, very interesting. Michael Pollan is also another uh, great uh, writer. And uh, there's an Indian author, Garima. Um, I met, uh, rather, I read this book recently, say, uh, a year ago, The Body Nirvana. That's very interesting. The psychological aspects, because PCOS affects the uh, self-esteem, the mind in a big way. And uh, this really had a lot of pointers. And uh, Jason Fong talks uh, quite a lot about fasting. And he's helped quite a lot of clients uh, with his fasting techniques. So that's another one. And way back in 2013, this was the trigger. Peter Atia, uh, this TEDx video really made me think quite a lot. Uh, I would highly recommend um, all of the viewers to check his TEDx talk. Uh, that's brilliant. And also check his page. And uh, Dr. Mark Hyman is a functional medicine expert. I follow him very closely. And also, of course, uh, Dr. Jason Fong's uh, writings. And Dr. Zoe Harkomay, I think she's brilliant. And she's questioned every basic uh, dietary guideline that's come. And uh, she's done extensive reading. And her PhD itself is so very interesting. So this is another person that I would uh, recommend you to look up. Can I uh, stop sharing the slides? OK, uh, that's quite extensive. And uh, before I move on to the last question, Shiny, I'm going to uh, yeah. Yes, yes, please. All right, so uh, before I move on to the last question, uh, I would like to introduce Shiny Surendran. You have a lot of you know her already, but uh, this is more for those few people who don't know her. Uh, Shiny Surendran is a sports and preventive health nutritionist with 20 years of experience. She is the first Indian to complete the graduate diploma in sports nutrition from International Olympic Committee. She holds a master's degree in food service management and dietetics in India. She is a level two kinanthropometrist from Isaac, New Zealand. She's an accredited sports dietitian from Sports Dietitians Australia. Her work experience include clinical dietitian in Apollo Hospital in Chennai, corporate nutritionist in Mish Bangalore, sports nutrition lecturer in the Department of Arthroscopy and Sports Medicine at Sri Ramachandra University, consulted at various fitness centers. She has worked with the Weed basketball team, Camp Last cricket team, Indians, Squash Academy, Hudson Badminton Center, and the Cover DT. Her client list includes hundreds of celebrities from the professional sport entrepreneurs. She really has the who's who consulting her on sports nutrition. She regularly appears on television shows, writes for magazines, conduct. She has been actively involved in the Indian Dietetic Association for many years. 
And last year, she completed the Bangalore Boston Nutrition Batch. So, Shiny, you have had a brilliant career and uh, uh, an excellent uh, education qualification as well. So, I'm going to ask you since that was all about sports, I thought I would introduce you a little later rather than in the beginning because we also have a lot more viewers now than when it started. Since you deal with sports nutrition and fitness, can you throw some light on the kind of exercises that a woman with PCOS can choose? You did mention about uh, uh, you know, yoga and things like that. But can you be a little more specific and tell them what in yoga asana or what kind of exercises, how frequent? you know, how many minutes a day or of that, please? Okay, okay. Uh, fine. I think there is a lag between, uh, you know, because of the network. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction, Sheila, ma'am. Um, I, I also worked with you in Niche, and I was the nutrition manager when I moved out of Bangalore. So. I've learned a lot uh, working with you as one of your team member and uh, gained quite a lot of experience in preventive health. Because at the time when all the dietitians were thinking about working in a clinical setup in hospitals or uh, being an academician in a university, uh, I think you uh, and your friends uh, were, were totally different. You thought out of the box and then started your company and uh, worked in the area of preventive nutrition, uh, which was not even popular or in India at that point in time. So this is 1998, right? Yeah, so I've, I've gained a lot of knowledge uh, by working uh, with you and just observing you. Um, and that's been a great privilege for me. I think that was the trigger from then on, uh, trying to see what best can one do to uh, prevent disease uh, so that we can avoid or rather let healthy people stay healthy and not step into the hospital unnecessarily. Um, I, and I think during COVID lockdown, the best time for so we've all realized how important health is and how important it is to exercise sleep on time eat the right kind of foods and improve immunity and as far as yes. excess pcos uh, goes uh, i do not uh, give advice on exercise because i don't have a professional certification but out of the 20 years of work experience 12 years i have been uh, working with a lot of fitness professionals and fitness studios and also been in the ground interacting with a lot of physiotherapists and coaches. Uh, so what I've understood is one needs to be physically active. And most often when uh, these individuals come to PCOS issues, it's just that they think just doing household work is exercise, which is not. You need a regimented exercise prescription given by a professional after doing a thorough analysis. OK, so first point of contact with the physiotherapist who does an analysis to see whether there's any backache issue or there is a limb length discrepancy or there is a pelvic tilt or if there is scoliosis. So they do a whole lot of assessments and then they give pointers. Now with that report, one goes to the fitness professional who customizes an exercise prescription and periodically they do follow-ups and keep changing their program. So usually once in six weeks change. And um, also cardiovascular fitness, plus weight training both together the results are excellent so as they increase their muscle mass automatically there is a remarkable improvement in the uptake of uh, insulin or rather in the uptake of glucose so insulin resistance becomes insulin sensitivity over a period of time so anywhere between six to eight months of time we see a fantastic change in the uh, fast, uh, fasting postprandial insulin as well as hb c and the pigmentation goes away and a lot of women who had infertility issues, they conceived naturally uh, once all these lifestyle changes were made. And if they don't like gyms, yoga asanas, and that too, after a thorough assessment, each yoga teacher has a different approach. And um, I've just trusted these professionals and uh, they, they do such a fabulous job. And that has helped a lot of our uh, clients. So I'll say cardio with weight training or cardio and uh, yoga asana. This is the formula and every single day some kind of an activity or the simplest thing that they can do is 
um, use a band, um, any kind of, uh, you know, so that you check the number of footsteps that you're clocking in every day, um, around 12 to 15,000 steps a day, throughout the day. So we call this as neat calories, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, just doing a workout for one hour and doing nothing for the rest of the day, or rather just sitting and doing some work on the laptop, or that's not enough because you negate the benefits that you reap from the one hour of workout. One needs to be active throughout the day. And that helps a lot in the overall, you know, the physiological functions, everything are activated and they respond much better. The hormone problems get reset. So diet would be 70, 80%. Um, exercise is anywhere between 20 to 30%. That's the contribution towards reversing PCOS. And that works, this formula works. I've been doing this since 2006. Okay, uh, thank you for that uh, you know, in information on exercise. Uh, we have lots of questions uh, in the chat box, Shiny, but I'm not going to go to the question answers just as yet because people are eagerly waiting to see the recipes that Neeti is going to share. And uh, introducing Mrs. Neeti Jaipuria to all of you, she's a creative chef and partner at Gumdrops Bangalore. She's an amazing cook. She's been treating her family and friends to awesome dishes for many, many decades. And she has now turned her passion into entrepreneurship. She caters for parties and other occasions. Her snacks, desserts, mouth fresheners, digesters are freshly made at home from scratch. And today she has brought some dishes for the viewers. Uh, keeping in mind all the guidelines that Shiny has shared and especially meant for PCOS uh, people. So, uh, Niti, over to you and request you to share the recipes, please. Thank you, Sheila. And thank you, Shiny, for guiding me to and helping me to make the meal plan. Pleasure. And, your, and uh, the qualifications which you have acquired is more than a mouthful. I, I say I'm just a plain BSc, but it's an honor to be associated with you and Sheila. Uh, just give me a moment, uh, friends. I will just share my screen with you. Just give me a moment. Sure. Meanwhile, yeah, so today, I'm yeah. just going to read a couple of things uh, that are in the chat box. Uh, this, this one question which says, what are the, the okay, the, I, yeah, I think, yes, yes, the slides are coming in. Yeah. Yeah, so friends, today what I have for you here, uh, as guided by Shiny, is a waist soup, a galotti kebab, a moong dal roti, and some for dessert, a multi-seed truffle. So going on to the waist soup, the ingredients of this is two cups of whey. Now, this is not the commercial way which is available in the making cottage cheese or paneer as we call it. And to make this, we need a, a teaspoon of oil, uh, half a cup of uh, finely chopped vegetables, mixed vegetables, which could be beans, cabbage, broccoli, spinach, any green vegetable which is freely available with you at home, two quarts of finely chopped uh, garlic, a teaspoon of tomato ketchup, half a teaspoon of uh, ginger paste, and salt and pepper to taste. And you may also add a drop of soya in case you like and you spice it up. So the method to make this is, uh, you have collected the whey which, uh, which you had once you had uh, made the paneer or the uh, cottage cheese. So now take oil and heat it in a pan, add the ginger and chopped garlic and saute on low flame. Add the mixed vegetables and continue to saute once the vegetables are slightly cooked, not overcooked, add the whey, 
uh, salt and pepper and tomato ketchup. Boil this for about five minutes. In case you find this uh, soup a little watery to your preference, you may just add half a teaspoon of corn um, uh, uh, flour in some water and add it. It will thicken the soup and you can have it hot, serve it hot. Uh, hot. The next one which I have for you is a galotti kebab. This is full of protein. In this, I have used uh, half a cup of boiled kidney beans, which is rajma, and uh, half a uh, quarter teaspoon uh, cup of soya chunks, half one and a half teaspoons of oil, one chopped onion, a teaspoon of ginger garlic paste, and a teaspoon of kevra water, which is available in the market, and some salt to taste. The method to do this is uh, you have boiled uh, rajma, you wash and soak the soya chunks for about 30 minutes, then squeeze it tightly, remove all the water and grind it in the mixer. Also grind the boiled rajma roughly, not to a very fine paste, then heat half a teaspoon of oil in a pan, add the ginger garlic paste and saute, then add the onions and cook it on a low flame until it is brown in color. Cool it and blend this in a mixer. Then in a bowl, take the ground rajma, the soya and the onion paste and mix it well. Add the kevra water, salt and mix all these ingredients. Heat a non-stick tawa, shape these into a round uh, tiki and place it on the tawa. Add a few drops of oil and cook it until crisp and serve it hot with a mint chutney. The next one, uh, is a moong dal roti. Uh, as uh, Shiny told, we must have a protein rich diet. So these rotis are made out of moong dal. Uh, I have not used any. Yeah. Yes, Sheila. Can you make the presentation mode? Sorry. If you can go into the presentation mode, Niti ma'am. You can just okay. The slides will be much larger. Okay, okay. At the bottom, you just have to click yeah. on it. It's written as percentage. Next to that, okay. next to it. the icon before that, the icon before that, uh, before this, the person. This one. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 this no, one? no. Before. Yes. Yes. Just click on it. Can you just go to the screen and say okay? Yeah. Okay. Can you just go back and click there, ma'am? Yeah. Just a moment. Before the percentage is written. Okay. Okay. The next, the, the next icon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Yes. Is that big? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the moong dal roti going ahead is uh, half a cup of moong dal. That is a raw moong dal. Two teaspoons of isabgul husk, which is called the phylum husk. This is a husk which is full of uh, 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 which is full of uh, fiber then uh, four to uh, uh, four teaspoons tablespoons of washed and chopped fenugreek uh, leaves which is methi one finely chopped chili and uh, salt to taste so the preparation for this is we grind the moong dal, the dry moong dal, in a mixer into a fine powder. We add the isabgol, the methi leaves, the green chili, and the salt and mix it well. Add water and make it into a soft roti dough. Keep this aside for about 30 minutes for the uh, moong dal and the isabgol to soak well. And then roll out chapatis and cook them on a tawa. You can serve this with any vegetable. Then the th uh, fourth thing is a mixed seed trufel. This is what I've given you as a dessert. Here I've taken one fourth cup of mixed seeds. These can be any seeds like flax, sesame, pumpkin, cucumber, or melon. And three, two to three dates, which are de-seeded. A teaspoon of uh, cocoa nibs, which is a chocolate form, and a pinch of cardamom. To make this, we toast all the seeds and uh, de-seed the date and run it in a mixture to form a thick paste. In a bowl, add the seeds, add the date paste and these cocoa nibs and cinnamon powder. 
mix it well and shape it into balls and you can store this into a uh, airtight uh, container so i will be showing you the pictures i will be showing you the pictures of the food that i have just shared with you the recipes so this is the way soup you can see viewers can you get a look uh, am i visible yes 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 okay. very interesting nice yes yeah this is the thick way soup i have not added any corn flour in this it is very delicious and very very nutritive so this is the way soup and here we go this is the galotti kebab so these are round tikkis in shape of a tikki like how we do our aloo tikki which is made out of rajma and soya you can serve this with min chutney this is the roti i'm mentioning this is you cannot really make out it's a normal roti by side but it is made out of this moong dal and the husk which is again very nutritive and the last but not the least is our dessert this is my truffle the name is uh, deceptive <laughs> but it gives you a lot of <laughs> a lot of iron and all the required uh, nutrition like shani had mentioned so it has all the seeds and it has uh, it's made of uh, dates and with a dash of chocolate as an eye wash so yeah excellent uh, i'm i'm coming <laughs> to bangla once the lockdown is over most welcome most welcome it will be a pleasure <laughs> yeah so with that i have sh showcased all my stuff which i had done today shila i'm unable to hear you that's coming through i think the issue that one <laughs> okay thank you so much uh, niti that was awesome amazing looks so yum and i think everybody is going to dash to buy a lot to your place now <laughs> So thank you once again. Uh, yes. Now shall we move on to the questions from the viewers? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So uh, well, the, the, there was a question. What are the best foods to treat PCOS? I think you already answered that. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, so the next one that's uh, coming up is, man, could you uh, the diet for PCOS fibroids? because i'm suffering from heavy bleeding every month okay um uh, kavya lakshmi's question ma'am certain fibroids cannot be corrected with just the diet alone you definitely need to go uh, get it analyzed you know with a gynecologist uh, because i've spoken to so many gynecologists about fibroids and they say there are certain fibroids which have to be surgically removed so you really need to go take the help of a professional and find out what the issue is but what best can you do uh, on your part would be to follow these principles because whatever i've shared for pcos about an anti inflammatory diet so even for pcos it will be good uh, if you can avoid dairy and in certain individuals who have gluten or lactose intolerance avoiding these two itself will help tremendously and include a lot of plant based protein that's another thing because the quality of meat that you're getting is highly questionable so if you can get organic Um, organically grown vegetables and fruits the chemical load or the toxic load is much lesser and um, using a lot of uh, uh, steel or glass that also is going to help a lot endocrine disruptors i had as i had mentioned and paying attention to sleep cycle and all of that so also make sure that you do yoga asanas because it works on the neuroendocrine system and it's very effective to uh, correct any of the hormonal uh, issues but again one needs to be patient it might take anywhere between 6 months to 1 year and uh, always seek professional help qualified dietitians uh, check the indian dietetic association website because there are so many quacks in the industry 
Uh, I want you to ask the credentials of the nutritionist or the dietitian that you're working with. Ask them to show their certificate. You have every right to ask. So it'll be good if you know who you're working with. Yeah. OK, uh, that was a very elaborate answer. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, can the growth of facial hair be stopped with lifestyle changes? OK, so the hair that has come, it won't retract. It won't get sucked in. You really have to go in for a laser hair removal. But once the hormone issues are sorted, um, the hair growth will get controlled to a great extent. So the hirsutism that we call, you know, the facial hair that grows, um, all that can be controlled. So, But laser hair removal is the way to go for the ones which are already there. Yeah, so there is, uh, well, it's, I think a lot of people would like to know this, although you've answered this, is it possible to reduce weight if one is suffering from PCOS and hypothyroidism? Yes, yes, yes. It is possible. Uh, you just have to follow the principles that I had shared. You know, so with PCOS, please understand you can't eat bowls and bowls of fruit and also having quite a lot of rajma or chana and all that. Because understand that each individual has different or varying degrees of insulin resistance. Some might be absolutely fine with a cup of rajma or chana and eating a roti with that or having a idli or dosa. But there are certain individuals who really have to go very low carb. Um, it could be anywhere between 20 to 30 percentage of carb in an entire day. Uh, and the primary focus is on good fats, the fiber and the low starchy vegetables and fruits which have quite a lot of fiber and avoid all the refined flours as i mentioned um, focus on these factors uh, it is possible even in spite of these two conditions you can uh, lose weight and also reduce the medication to a great extent okay it's this your answer actually kind of connects to the next question uh, which says how do we know how much carbohydrates to, to give to an individual Fantastic question, Bhumika. Um, what you need to do is the first will be to go low carb and then slowly reintroduce carbohydrates for each meal and see how quickly the waist tip ratio is changing or the weight is coming back. You know, so there's a regain which happens. So then you'll know exactly how much they're able to tolerate. And also helping your client understand the percentage of carbohydrates which is there in grains, legumes, fruits, vegetables. Uh, everywhere because your legumes have around 40 percentage carbohydrates but of course there is a lot of fiber and protein sitting there but the carbohydrate is there so if you're eating uh, roti and uh, tole the roti also has carbohydrate the tole also has carbohydrates to a certain extent so educate them so that they understand how many rotis or how many cups of rice they can and uh, the best way would be to go low carb and then slowly for each meal bring back the carbohydrate and see whether they are gaining weight rapidly and you know that's the threshold that you stop right there okay Gluten has to be restricted only for individuals who have uh, gluten intolerance. Okay, uh, so shital. Um, one more thing is when you go or consider an anti inflammatory diet, uh, okay, uh, two things okay, that's this question. I think you've answered this already which fruits should be excluded for uh, PCOS. So we'll move on to the next question, uh, which says, uh, why does gluten have to be restricted? OK, uh, so if an individual has done a genetic test, and um, uh, if it's a confirmed case of an individual having non-celiac gluten sensitivity or gluten intolerance, it, it's good to avoid because it reduces the inflammation. Basically, dairy and gluten is avoided because what we get in the market is hexaploid wheat. And um, a lot of us have trouble uh, handling it. So the gut is inflamed. And when there is inflammation, there's a lot of water retention. And um, the internal environment itself is quite different. So at the cellular level, it would be best to limit the inflammation. So that's why gluten and dairy is limited. And uh, that really helps in the overall well-being and also for micronutrient absorption. 
because if one has non celiac gluten sensitivity and if there are no visible symptoms uh, then unless you do a genetic test you wouldn't know that they have it so it would be good to run this test or do an elimination test and then go on this gluten free diet it truly helps you can at least try this for a month with your client and give a lot of uh, gluten free options amaranth uh, quinoa millets rice the simplest thing to have would be any rice based dish Okay, interesting. Uh, all right, the next one is. Thank you for the lovely session. Of course, thank you very much to Shiny and Neeti for uh, uh, for the lovely session, and thank you for the compliment. How much complex carbohydrates and protein per day in grams do you prescribe for a person? Okay, so I'll give you the breakup. You could try forty, forty, twenty. So forty percent is carbohydrates, forty percent protein, and twenty percent of good fats. Uh, largely mufa and fufa and um, saturated fat as low as you know less than 10 percent okay but for certain individuals you might have to keep the carbohydrates in the between 20 to 30 percent in severe cases maybe even just 10 percent that's why these paleolithic diets became very popular in between yeah that's one the number of uh, grams of protein would be anywhere around 1 to 1.2 gram per kg body weight and if they're also doing weight training in the gym in order to increase the muscle mass, then they need to be supported with adequate protein. So that's when 1 to 1.2 gram per kg body weight of protein helps support. Okay. And the, again, the next question is related to carbohydrate. How much in the form of protein or rice is advisable? I mean, you did mention the percentage and uh, in terms of grams and weightage, but uh, can you quantify in a household measure? Okay, so when it comes to carbohydrate, are we talking about grains or is it going to be the pulses and legumes or fruits and vegetables? So that's the question. Are we getting the carbohydrate from any of these sources? If you are asking about grains, then if it's rice, anywhere between half to three fourths cup of rice, depending on how tall the individual is, what is the age and uh, what is the amount of physical activity they are indulging in. And if it is roti, again, the size of Niti Man's roti, what she showed. So I think the diameter, everything matters. And is it going to be a, how many grams is going to be the uh, dough uh, for each roti? Is it a thick roti in your house or is it something like a thepla? Right, Niti Man? I think all this matters. I, thickness matters. Yes, yes. When today right? I made it big in, uh, for visual purpose, we don't normally have that big. Yeah. Yes. So if it's going to be the size of a thepla or the size of a papad, then I would say just one. Yeah, I think that's fine for someone who is say five feet tall or five feet two, or if it is someone who is six feet tall, uh, then obviously they will need two or even three. So we just have to fine tune it according to the individual's uh, anthropometric measurements. Yeah. Uh, there's a question from Marty which says, uh, "Could we include wheat as a part of PCO's diet because you're told to avoid gluten?" Well, uh, I think I'm going to say that if you have to avoid gluten, then you cannot include wheat. But uh, if you can include wheat, then do so in small quantities. So that's kind of repetitive to what uh, Shiny said right? So uh, I gave a very brief description. Um, okay, next question here, here is on FODMAP. It's coming up. In a minute, yeah. yeah. Low FODMAP diet will help PCOS as well. apart from IBS. Can you recommend this to patients? Uh, I haven't recommended FODMAPs as such, but probably a modified FODMAP can be considered. But um, IBS is quite challenging. An individual who has frequent bowel movements and all that, for them, FODMAP is perfectly fine. But you could probably look at the approach for PCOS as um, dairy-free, gluten-free, low-carb, moderate protein, or high protein, and a good amount of fiber and plenty of good fat in the diet. This is how I would rather sum it up. Because there might be individuals who might still be able to eat some of the fruits which a person with IBS might not be able to tolerate. So FODMAP is, I'd rather 
put that for rather advise that for a person with IBS, IBD, Crohn's. Yeah, we can be formed as a topic uh, for one of the future sessions in yeah. uh, Nutrition Nectar. So more questions to go, so let's quickly finish this. Uh, this one says... I don't, I don't, I leave it to the doctors to decide on that. Uh, I do not give chromium pickle in it. But uh, let me tell you, I do recommend a supplement called uh, Cobadex CZS in certain clients, especially vegetarians, because we don't know about the micronutrient absorption. And uh, selenium, zinc, magnesium, magnesium, manganese um, is a huge question. Are you getting adequate amounts of it? Okay, and uh, monocropping is a big problem. So we don't know whether the fruits and vegetables that you're eating is coming from soil, which is like really nourished with a lot of uh, micronutrients, right? And uh, how far is it traveling to reach your home? And how long is it sitting in your refrigerator? And how much of nutrients do you have? All these are questions that one needs to ask, right? So if that's the case, then micronutrient supplementation would help. Uh, I don't specifically give chromium pickle in it, but as a micronutrient or a vitamin, yes. Okay, how to gain weight in PCOS? Interesting question. Okay, because there are uh, individuals who are extremely lean and they have PCOS. Do weight training because when you increase your muscle, okay. uh, PCOS is sorted and you also gain weight. Here is a here's a interesting question. It says how to gain weight in PCOS. That's been answered. Yeah, and do isoflavones yeah. play a role in PCOS? Okay, more than dairy, you can bank on plant proteins. Pea protein isolate and soy protein isolates are helpful. So Niti Ma'am's recipe, um, the galotti kebab with the soy is actually very interesting. And uh, that's that's a fantastic dish. Yes, yeah. people are giving that's soy. Interesting. It's, uh, it's good. So... Okay, the next one is do isoflavones. Okay, and this isoflavones in soy. Okay, there's a little time lag in I think in Yes. You're you're reading the question a moment later, Sheila. Yeah, yeah. So Amisha's question, I'm able to see uh, that uh, she has epilepsy and her periods is irregular. Uh, Amisha, please do consult with a gynecologist to see what, why you have irregular periods. Okay, And for epilepsy, kindly contact the clinical dietitian because uh, she would customize a green plan for you. Uh, because it's a different strategy altogether. You might be given a ketogenic diet or being taught carb counting. And um, I don't do that work. I think you should contact the clinical dietitian for that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, there's another one here you know, which says uh, with irregular periods. So, uh, epilepsy, sorry. Uh, yeah, epilepsy and irregular periods. Will diet help? That's been answered, Sheila. Shani's just answered that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I take the next question? Um, as we're giving minimum dairy products, won't it lead to calcium and vitamin D deficiency? Can I proceed to answer that? May I? Okay. 
So, um, see the kind of damage again, you don't know where the cow is from. Uh, what is the cow? Yeah, what's the cow? She's just please. And uh, uh, the kind of hormones that has been injected uh, so that the cow can continue to supply milk throughout the year. Okay, so consider that. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. Now, can you get vitamin D? Sunlight exposure is going to be very helpful. And then including mushrooms and then um, taking vitamin D supplements as per doctor's advice will be definitely uh, helpful. Next thing is, of course, calcium. You can get it from other sources. Um, Non-vegetarian foods can be included. Then, of course, all the uh, chana, rajma, and all those legumes. Then sesame seeds, green leafy vegetables. Though, of course, it does have nutrient inhibitors. When you have a combination of all this, millets, green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, and uh, getting adequate sunlight exposure, and also taking seafoods or non-vegetarian foods, you can uh, get calcium from other sources. So there are non-dairy sources of calcium which can be given. OK, thank you. Uh, well, we have actually overshot the time. So I'm just going to end with Dr. Molly Jo. She's uh, comment here, compliment rather, which says very nice and creative recipes. So thank you so much, uh, Niti and Shiny. Thank you. Uh, thank to, you. The, to the viewers, I would like to say that uh, there are a few more questions which have been unanswered, but due to lack of time, I'm sorry you will have to end here. But if you do wish to contact Shiny or Neeti, they have shared their contact details. Please do contact them directly. And uh, have both of you shared the contact details, Neeti and Shiny? Yeah. Uh, do you want okay. us? Yeah, I think we did share. It will be enough slides. Yes. If, you have, if you haven't, you can share it now. If you haven't uh, shared the details, you can show the contact slide now. So please uh, go ahead and share it, Shiny, if you haven't. Uh, so I'm telling the viewers, meanwhile, to please uh, contact Shiny and you directly. I'm sure oh, there, are, there really are a lot of other questions remaining. But thank you very much. And there are a lot of compliments also uh, which have come in, which says very informative. Thank you for conducting the session. Awesome session, etc., etc. So once again, thank you very much to the viewers. Shiny, are you going to share your contact now? Uh I'm not able to try. Can I do a screen share? Yes, yes, please. Please do a screen share. Is this visible? And mm -hmm. for those of you who don't, don't know the last no. For those of you who, who don't know Dr. Molly Joshi, she's a very senior nutritionist and has been a guide and mentor to several young dietitians in India. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm having trouble sharing probably because of the network, but Shiny Surendran is the name. You can find me on Instagram as well as Facebook. Okay, lots more compliments. Coming in, Anjana Nair. I'm going to share hers also. Thank you so much. It's so good to see Molly, ma'am, and all the other excellent session. Thank Great you. learn. Okay, let me try and share it from here. Okay, that's easy. Shiny Surendran is the full name. You can find her on Facebook as well as on Instagram. And she's always giving a lot of programs as well. So I'm sure you can follow her. Very interesting ones. Yeah. Thank you once again, viewers, uh, for uh, being with us, for following us, for attending our program programs and uh, keep keep a watch uh, 
on Nutrition Nectar channel, mm -hmm. you will be uh, seeing many more of such sessions, mm -hmm. similar ones.